Breaking news, U.S. Congressman Thomas Massey of Kentucky has now joined Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene in the mission to kick out the new House Speaker, Mike Johnson. Congressional correspondent Aisha Hosni is on Capitol Hill for us. And Aisha, we know in recent days Speaker Johnson has been fighting this off. Is he in jeopardy? Hey, Harris, good afternoon to you. Look, uh, Speaker Johnson's uh, speakership is getting very, very complicated by the minute. Marjorie Taylor Greene, of course, started this off with her motion to vacate, did not activate it uh, because she wanted to bring the conference uh, towards her side. And she has continuously told me that she's been hearing from members privately and quietly that they are frustrated with the speaker. And now she has one more congressman uh, on her side, a congressman who sits on a very powerful committee, I might add. Uh, and this is what they're saying. They're demanding that Speaker Johnson pre-announce his resignation, not stepping down immediately, but pre-announcing it to give the conference time to find a replacement. So they don't want to plunge the House into chaos. They don't want to go back to October when the House had to take vote after vote after vote trying to find a new speaker to replace Kevin McCarthy. Uh, here's actually Thomas Massey uh, earlier this morning about what he told Speaker Johnson face to face. The motion will get called, and then he's going to lose more votes than Kevin McCarthy. And I have told him this in private, like, weeks ago. So, uh, Speaker Johnson is responding today. Harris, he's saying that he is not going anywhere, that he's going to continue to do his job. Listen to this. I am not resigning, and it is, um, it is in my view, an absurd notion that someone would bring a vacate motion. And we are simply here trying to do our jobs. Um, it is not helpful to the cause. It is not helpful to the country. It has not helped the House Republicans advance our agenda, which is in the best interest of the American people here. Yeah, what this do is doing right now, Harris, is essentially weakening the speakership as he tries to roll the president and the Senate in this foreign aid package. Uh, I asked him about that today. He said this is not helpful to him and the conference at all. As I mentioned, Massey sits on the powerful rules committee, and you have to pass a rule before you can put a foreign aid package or anything on the House floor. You can only lose two Republicans because we expect all Democrats to vote against the rule. And now we have three Republicans so far that have said that they will not vote for the rule. It's essentially dead on arrival. So not only is the speakership um, in jeopardy, this foreign aid package that Speaker Johnson has presented a few hours ago, that's in jeopardy as well. So just to spend a little extra time with you, um, Speaker Johnson had basically broken that out country yeah. by country. He had separated everything out. Where does that stand now in terms yeah. of what we could see moving forward? Does everything well, get lumped back in? Like, what happens? Yeah. It's really interesting, Harris, because last night we heard a lot of different members from different corners of the GOP conference saying that they were actually pretty pleased with this because what Speaker Johnson is offering is by separating everything out, he's offering political cover for folks who may want to pass Israel aid but don't want to pass Ukraine aid right. because they have suspicions about it. So that's what he was offering them, something they've long wanted. But a lot of folks now this morning have come out and said, look, I like the idea of separating but there's no border security in this. How could we even take a vote on foreign aid when we're not talking about our own southern border? Eli Crane is one of them. He mm -hmm. likes this idea of separation, but does not like the fact that there's no border provisions. And then you've got the Senate as well, Senate Republicans who are jamming up the Senate floor right now, trying to help Speaker Johnson, trying to motivate him yeah. to hold the line because there is an Israel so aid package that the House passed in the Senate right now that Schumer will not take up? Well, there is no more urgent situation uh, than the wars that are going on, yes. particularly that one, our strongest ally in the Middle East. And then I'm wondering, too, why we couldn't have just stuck with considering the Republican-led H.R. 2 yeah. standalone border bill that came out of the House and went to the Senate in May of 2023. Why couldn't they take a look at that? Why couldn't they took, you know, at least put that up on the floor? But Chuck Schumer wouldn't do it. They wanted their own version. And look at where we sit now. Aisha, thank you for the breaking news. Come back if, if you get an update. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.